Hey everybody, we're talking about stewards after Eden, and I have to confess, I am really excited about today's lesson because we're talking about stewards of spiritual truth. When we think about stewardship, so often our minds just go right to money. What can I do to get more from God? But the reality is that he has given us so much in terms of spiritual truth. Yesterday, in our previous lesson, we talked about the greatest truth, the mystery of godliness, the gospel of Jesus coming to die for our sins while still being God to bridge the gap between us and the Father. That's amazing. But there are even more amazing truths. And that's what we're going to talk about today and how the Lord has given us these to be stewards of, to live, to give, and to love. And so we want to pray for our focus verse in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, which says, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. And there is amazing truth that the Lord has given to us in addition to the gospel. And that's what we want to look on in our big three. Now, obviously, we're not going to look at all of the gifts, all of the truths, but three in particular that stand out that the Lord wants to make sure that you're encouraged to know that he has given to you. One of them is that we've been given the gift of grace. First Peter chapter four, verse 10 talks about grace, where it says, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, the manifold grace of God. This is, is talking about an unfolding and an unending, you know, those little dolls, a little babushka dolls where you, you take one doll out and then there's another doll inside and you open that doll and there's another one inside. That's how the manifold grace of God works, but it's not getting smaller. It is manifesting itself greater day by day, another unfolding manifestation. In fact, the Bible says new mercies we see every day in this revelation of this manifold grace. Ephesians chapter one, seven says when it talks about this gift of grace in whom Jesus in him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins. Now, now what's the currency? What's the rubric for this um, giving, this manifestation? According to the riches of his grace. So, so the reserve, the bank, it's according to the riches of his grace. Our forgiveness is it's, it's actually sourced in his grace. So it doesn't exist in an emotion. It doesn't exist in, in the in the ether. It exists in the manifold riches of his grace. So forgiveness will run out when grace runs out. And so that's why when I think about forgiveness, I, I envision an ocean, not a bottle, not not even a, a, a reservoir. But I'm thinking of an ocean of grace that empowers us to not just be forgiven, but to then be forgiving to others. But this is the manifold grace. And finally, in Romans five, verse 15, but not as the offense. So also it's the free gift. There it is. Now, here's the price of this gift. We talked about stewardship. This is how much it costs. It's free, freely given, but not freely earned on his part. Because for if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man. The one who paid the price, the one for whom it cost everything, Jesus Christ, he has abounded unto many. This grace is given by grace. That's like a whole nother study, but we don't have time and that's not our focus. But the grace of God, this gift freely given and all he asks is that we share it. All he asks is that we be stewards of it and in appreciation for its abundance that we would render abundant surrender, that we would give abundant praise, that we would give abundant faith, trusting in this ocean that does not just bury my sin, but this ocean that allows me now to swim and to embrace and to experience this love in fellowship with others, with my wife, our children, others around us, our community. This is God's desire. And this is one of those amazing gifts that's been given to us. And he wants us to be stewards of the second gift that God has given to us. He's also asked us to be stewards 
of the gift of the armor of God. The armor of God. Yes, it is a gift to the believer in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, where it says we are told, take unto you the whole armor of God. Thank you, Lord. It's not piecemeal. Thank you that we don't have to do something to earn the next piece. This is not a video game. where We have to go level by level. But he says, take the whole armor. And you will be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, verse 14 and 15, stand therefore. Now you're standing, but don't stand up without the armor. <laughs> See, stay, 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 bow at the feet of Jesus. Confess your sin and receive his grace. And once you have receive his hand and he raises you up now, standing in that grace, stand now having your loins gird about with truth, wrapped up, bound in truth, have on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness covering the heart, protecting the most vital of organs, and knowing that my heart is trusting and not my righteousness, but Christ's. 15 tells us, and our feet, where we go, what we do, our activity, it should be fueled and shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So I am message driven, I am message guided and I am message based. I'm standing in the gospel, driven by the gospel, sharing the gospel while myself standing in the faith of the gospel. This is how we ought to position ourselves now for faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's why we shouldn't get, well, I don't know why Christians are surprised when they have to fight. I don't understand why we get, get thrown off our game when people say things about us that aren't true or when people accuse us or when people get in our way. This is the battle. But the reason why we're able to have on this helmet of salvation while hiding behind the shield of faith and wielding the sword of the spirit is because this is a battle that's already been won. This is simply me bearing witness to the victory that Christ has achieved for my sake. So I'm standing in behind this shield of faith, trusting him to protect me on my mind. I'm not thinking about that person. I'm not thinking about the enemy. I'm not thinking about my sins. I'm thinking about my salvation. And I find my mind able to think on these things because of the sword of the spirit. I'm meditating on the word of God. And here I am able now to not just stand, but even to move forward in faith, able to not just stand against the wiles of the devil. This is not just a defensive armor, because if it was defensive, I wouldn't have a sword. But having the shield of faith now, I'm able through faith to block the lies of the enemy and to pierce <laughs> and to pierce the souls of those who need Jesus with the sword of truth. Just like you hear my voice now and it's piercing your soul. It's not me. It's the word of God that has told us, hey, told us, hey, you are delivered. Hey, I've died for you. Hey, I've forgiven you. Hey, if you would just abide in me and let me abide in you, my desire is that you bear much fruit, not just hoard or get much fruit, but bear fruit. These are things that we have been given. And he only asked that we would be stewards of these gifts. Final gift that the Lord is, has given us, that we're going to recognize. This is not the last gift that God has given us. No, no. The third that we're going to look at today, we've been given the gift of eternal life with Jesus. After this battle is over, we've been promised victory. And after victory now, eternal life with Jesus. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We've been given the gift of eternal life. And even Jesus spoke of it when he was here on earth in John 14, John four, rather verse 14 to the woman at the well, he says, whosoever. And I love the story of the woman at the well, because that means it's the man at the well. It's the woman at the well. It's us today standing at the well, but drinking not. If that's you, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him, shall be in her, a well of water springing up 
into eternal life. I hope we're catching the tense of this. Jesus is not speaking of what's to come after the second coming, after he comes back. He says, look, this life begins the moment you start drinking because I will be in them a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This verse lets us know that eternal life is not just a quantity of existence, but it is a quality of existence. While the quantity is ongoing and forever, the quality is to be right now. It's to be experienced and to be drunk right now. Because when you read John 6, 27, don't work for the meat which perisheth. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Don't work for money, but labor for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. Well, how do I labor for it? Clearly, because that sounds contradictory, because we were just saying, well, wait a minute, I thought this was all free. I thought it was all in grace. Look at Jesus. Look at the consistent Christ. Don't labor for the meat that perisheth, but labor for the meat which endureth unto life. How do we labor? Well, obviously, he's not asking us to work for it because he says, labor for that which endureth unto eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. In other words, your package is sealed. It is delivered. The only thing, you know what the work that you've got to do for this gift? Open it. Open it. In other words, believe. Open. Believe. Because the gift has already been sealed by the Father. It's here for us to enjoy. It's here for us to start living now in the terms of the quality. And we await the day of quantity. The day that even those who now sleep in Jesus, while they're enjoying quality sleep, <laughs> they're in, in, in effect, they're, they're also enjoying eternal life. Because they're at peace now, resting in peace to then rise forever in peace. So we have the assurance of those that we love who are resting in him. And we have the assurance now of us who live now to enjoy this quality of life that will never, this peace that will never, this joy, this love that will never end. And as it's been freely given, I pray that it's freely received. That as we were allowed, as we are even now allowed to be put in trust with this gospel and all these spiritual truths, speak them, live them, share them, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth, and thank you, God, which changeth our hearts. Mm -hmm.